Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and in today's video, we are taking a look at a really fun spice pick, Steelix, in the Great League Remix Cup. Now, with the start of Season 9, Steelix did get a buff. Its charge move, Crunch, now has a 30% chance to lower the opponent's defense. So combining a move that debuffs your opponent's defense with a hard-hitting fast move in Dragon Tail, Steelix is a lot of fun to run right now. I decided to pair it with a Pidgeot on the lead and a Diggersby on the safe switch. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches and let's take a look at the newly buffed Steelix in action in the Great League Remix Cup. Hopping into the first match, amazing lead Pidgeot into Shadow Machamp. The opponent is going to be switching out into the Alolan Muck, and we have a really nice response for Alolan Muck in Diggersby. As Diggersby can comfortably tank multiple Dark Pulses, so my goal here is I'm going to try and farm up to 100 energy, connect with the Earthquake, and then hopefully be able to connect with an Earthquake versus the Shadow Machamp. We're going straight for the Earthquake here. This will be taking out the Alolan Muck which it does, and now we're going to try and get to the Earthquake versus the Shadow Machamp. Unfortunately, the plan doesn't quite work, and we're only able to get to a Fire Punch. But Fire Punch still does chunk quite a bit, and so will these Gusts. Now, we do have to respect the Rock Slide here, absolutely. We are going to shield that up, and the opponent switches out into a Shadow Hypno, and this is one reason why I love running the Pidgeot Steelix combo. You can debuff their attack by two stages with Feather Dance, and now bring in the incredibly bulky Steelix. Now look how little the Shadow Ball does to Steelix now that we've debuffed their attack by two stages. Oh my goodness. Combining the lowering of the attack plus the natural bulk of Steelix, it is a really, really fun combo. In comes the Shadow Machamp, and again, we're going to try for the defense drop with Crunch. So we throw the Crunch right away. Unfortunately, we're not able to get it, but thanks to the Dragon Tail damage, we're able to fully farm down the Shadow Machamp and take the win. All right, hopping to the next match, we have a Wish Cash on the lead. Now, we definitely do have to watch for the Blizzard here, and since Feather Dance got nerfed, it now costs five extra energy, which unfortunately, due, due to how rounding works for the, for the amount of energy that Gust generates, you actually do need an extra Gust to reach it. So whereas before, Pidgeot could outpace Wish Cash to the Blizzard, now it cannot. But the nice thing is we are able to outpace it to the second one, just not the first. So we'll be able to double debuff them here. And now that they're double debuffed, we can tank the Blizzard. Don't get me wrong, it still hurts, but we can survive it and we're able to farm down and leave with some energy. Now the opponent brings in Frostlass. And since my Diggersby definitely doesn't want to see this, I'm going to stay in and opt to go for the Brave Bird, hoping they think it's a Feather Dance. And they do. In one shots, they bring in Drapion. And we bring in Diggersby and the opponent quits really quickly. All right, <laughs> hopping into the next match, we have Pidgeot into Lickitung. Again, this is a pretty solid matchup for Pidgeot, since these legs are going to be doing absolutely no damage thanks to Pidgeot's normal typing. The body slams will add up, but after we get this Feather Dance off, then we won't have to worry about that too much. Feather Dance, they're able to read that it's just a Feather Dance, and they're going to build up some energy, switch out into the Obstagoon. Now I'm going for the Brave Bird, hoping for the No Shield, but unfortunately they read it, and now I have to switch into Steelix. So this is a little rough, as Steelix is my second best goon counter. The nice thing is Dragon Tail really adds up, but I have to go for Crunch right away and hope for this defense drop. And there's a little bit of lag there. They tank it, and the defense drops. This is really big, and this is why Steelix is definitely improved, as with the defense dropping, we're actually able to force them to switch out. They can't just stay in and farm down, and we'll be able to reach a crunch versus the Lickitung, and we lower their defense as well, just for the heck of it. And we're just going to let this go. That is totally fine. And now we have two normal types, so we'll be able to resist all of the licks, Totally fine there. I shield up because a body slam would be getting us kind of low. And now, do they bring back in the goon or do they bring in their third? We will have to see. They bring back in the goon. The goon does have some energy. I'm going to shield this up because I really want to feather dance their last mod. They bring it in. It's an Ariados. And we are going to be able to feather dance the Ariados. 
bring in the Diggersby, and unfortunately, Ariados just gets absolutely smacked around by the Pidgeot Diggersby combo. There's really not a lot they're going to be able to do. Sure, if they want to, they can go for the lunges, but lunge really doesn't do a whole lot, and these fire punches are really going to start to add up as we connect with the first. And I do want to over farm as much as possible because I'm not worried about Ariados taking out my Diggersby, but I want to try and leave with energy if at all possible so I can chuck it at the goon. Fire Punch takes out the Ariados. And now, since we over farmed, we're going to be able to throw a Fire Punch into the Obstagoon and switch back into Pidgeot, get that last Gust in, and we're able to take the win. So I probably could have played the end game there a little better with just going for the Earthquake, but. It ended up working out. All right, hopping to the next match, and now we're gonna take a look at some core breakers. We have Unova Stunfisk is a definite issue for this team, as both Pidgeot and Steelix are weak. So I will typically like to switch in the Steelix here. And if at all possible, I'm gonna have to tank two moves, which isn't great, but I should be able to reach this Earthquake. Yes, the natural bulk of Steelix coming in clutch, and this Earthquake will do big damage if not shielded, so we're able to force the shield, and the Dragon Tails do chunk. And now I am gonna wait my clock because I'm still switch locked in, and they're not. And now we're gonna bring in Diggersby, and they're staying in, which honestly, I am totally fine with them throwing their energy here, that works for me. Mud Bomb, sure. Yeah, you know what? Throw another one. Works for me. D Diggersby is incredibly tanky. We really don't have to worry about these charge moves. They're going to switch into a Bomb of Snow. Now, I'm going to be going straight for the Fire Punch. It's double super effective, does a nice chunk of damage, and now we're going to bring in Pidgeot. And the fact that we got that Gust through means I believe we can farm down. So I'm going to shield up this Weather Ball here, and we're able to farm down without taking another move. In comes the Stunfisk, and we're going to be going for the Brave Bird, trying to do maximum damage to the Stunfisk, and it connects! Oh, this is really big! My defense is lowered, though, so I have to shield, but if we're able to gust down here, then we should hopefully be able to land a Feather Dance on whatever's in back. We are able to gust down, that's huge, it's a wiggly tough. And now, since they only have one Pokemon left alive, this is where Feather Dance is at its best, as now the Wigglytuff has to play out the rest of the match with 50% attack, which is really unfortunate. Earthquake lands, and since their charms are debuffed, they're not able to charm us down. They're forced to throw their energy to avoid getting hit by the Fire Punch. And you know what? That works great for me. Pidgeot able to come back in, and we're going to gust all the way down and get the win. So again, that's definitely one of the rougher leads you can see that and Empoleon, but we were able to survive it. Hopping into the next match, I'm picking up a pretty neutral lead versus Obstagoon. Now I am gonna shield this up because typically if I am gonna be going for the Feather Dance here, which I often do, but this time it looks like I decided to go for the Brave Bird since a lot of people had not been shielding, but this absolute mad lad decided to shield, so bravo, well done. Night Slash will just not take us out, and now we're going to bring in Steelix. And again, we've seen what we have to do in this matchup. We need to get to that crunch and hope for the defense drop, as that's going to be allowing our Dragon Tails to do even more damage. Going straight for the crunch here. They decide to let that go, and we're able to Dragon Tail down. We'll see what they have in the back. They have a Wish Cash, so this is pretty rough for our Steelix, but... The nice thing is, is our Diggersby does handle Wish Cash pretty well. No defense drop on the crunch. As I mentioned, it's only 30%, so it's not something you can rely on all the time, but when it happens, it is very useful. We are gonna bring in the Diggersby here, and Blizzard will hurt. Do we shield? We do, and we correctly shield the Blizzard. That is very big, and now the opponent does a very nice catch of the Earthquake. They sack the Nido Queen, recognizing it has absolutely no play. Back in comes the Wish Cash, and at this point, I kind of have to bait with the Fire Punch. We should hopefully be able to get the shield here, which we do, and now I'm going to switch into Pidgeot. They're not going to be able to Mud Shot me down, so they're going to be forced to throw a move here. They go for the Mud Bomb, it doesn't KO, but the Gust that went through as they threw was able to KO. Alright, hopping to the next match, Lantern, another Pokemon that isn't great for us to see. I checked the fast move, it's Spark, 
And now we're gonna safe swap into our Steelix. They counter swap with a Nido Queen, which is a very interesting safe switch. One Earth Power will not KO, so I call the bait, and they Poison Fang baited. Calling that bait is massive, as now we are able to apply a ton of pressure onto Nido Queen. They shield up the Earthquake, which isn't great, but as you can see, look at the damage the raw damage that Dragon Tail is doing to Needle Queen. And from this range, I'm just gonna start going for Crunch. As Crunch is gonna be doing a solid chunk of damage and we're able to farm down and flip switch. They bring back in Lantern. I'm a little worried about them getting to a Hydro Pump. So maybe I could have got to the Earthquake, but I kind of chickened out and just go for the Crunch. But as it turns out, that ended up being a good decision as they were at the Hydro Pump. My internal clock was correct in that regard. Bunch of lag and the Steelix gets taken out. But now we have the Diggersby lined up against the Spark Lantern. They have Mandibuzz and we'll bring in Pidgeot. And now with Pidgeot, we're just gonna need to Feather Dance and then probably go for the Brave Bird. My guess is they will not shield the first as it's a pretty obvious Feather Dance. But with the second one, we should hopefully be able to force a shield with a potential Brave Bird. Again, since we have lowered their attack, we don't have to shield this one, which is really nice as had we not, two Dark Pulses would have KO'd there. And now we're going for the Brave Bird. Gonna do maximum damage unless they decide to shield and we do get that shield. Now, Diggersby versus Mandibuzz is an unfortunate matchup, but the nice thing is their attack is debuffed and we are still super healthy. And since their attack is debuffed, we're totally fine with letting this go. Dark Pulse, sure, hit me with it. They bring in the Lantern. My guess is they will not bait here. They'll probably go straight Hydro Pump, which they do. And unfortunately, that did end up being a, a, a CMP there. So I'm not able to over farm. We're going for the Earthquake. In comes the Mandibuzz. And again, even though they've reset their debuff, Mandibuzz just doesn't hit particularly hard. So the Dark Pulse not doing nearly enough. And we're going to be able to get to the Fire Punch. And that is going to be taking care of the Mandibuzz. And Diggersby actually beating a Flyer. You absolutely love to see it. <laughs> Hopping into the next match, and we have another Obstagoon lead. I've seen those quite a bit. My guess is people trying to counter the absolute plethora of Cofagrigus that have entered the Great League this season, which makes quite a bit of sense as my team is triple strong against Cofagrigus, so I definitely understand wanting to counter it. Now, they're able to correctly call the Feather Dance and save swap into Shadow Golbat. Now, I actually did play this line earlier in the day, and unfortunately, I did lose to it. But now that I'm seeing it again, I'm able to recognize that it's probably a Nita Queen in the back, so I need to bring in Steelix here. And we're able to get the Crunch debuff, which is so nice. They panic throw the Poison Fang. They're only going to get to the Poison Fang, and we are going to be able to farm down. In comes the Obstagoon. We're going for the Crunch again. This is resisted damage, but we can hope for that defense debuff. Little bit of lag there. It lands, and we simultaneously KO. And is it the Nita Queen? It is. So we just bring in Pidgeot. They only have one Pokemon left. This is my absolute favorite thing to do when they have only one Pokemon left. We're going to Feather Dance them. Now they have no way of raising their attack again. And the opponent decides they don't want to play anymore. All right. <laughs> Hopping in the next match, we have Pidgeot into Rainy Cast Form. Now, Rainy Cast Form, I've only seen, I believe, maybe once or twice so far in Remix, but it can be a little tricky for this team to handle because it has the Weather Ball, which can handle the back two mons, and Thunder, which can handle Pidgeot. We're able to get a shield with Pidgeot, which is really nice, and our Gusts do huge damage, so honestly, I'm okay with tanking this Thunder and going down because we should be able to bring in Steelix, and Steelix will be able to apply a ton of pressure here, and they bring in Cofagrigus. And this is something, as I mentioned last battle, we love to see with this team. We go for the crunch, we're able to get the shield, and now we're going to catch the Shadow Ball onto the normal type, where it is double resisted. That does absolutely no damage. That is fantastic. Now, they should be able to Psychic us here, and Psychic will do a nice chunk of damage, but we're able to connect with this Earthquake, and Earthquake, I'm gonna actually slightly undercharge it because if possible, I would like to mud shot them down, which we're able to do, and now we leave with a move. This is really nice. They bring in a Shadow Drapion, and poor Shadow Drapion is going to get absolutely vanquished by this Earthquake. 
They bring back in the cast form and they're throwing the Weather Bowl. Now we can let this go. We can just save our two shields for Steelix and Steelix is going to be able to comfortably close this match. All we have to do is shield once and one more Dragon Tail will be taking them out. All right, and hopping into the next match here. I was going to try and pronounce that username, but I changed my mind. All right, we have Pidgeot into Mandibuzz. This is a lead that we'll probably want to stay in at the very least for a while because we can't really switch out of here because if we end up getting the Mandibuzz line with our Diggersby endgame, that's a very miserable position for Diggersby to be in. So we are going to go for the Feather Dance, lower their attack, and now they bring in Empoleon, and Empoleon is the biggest core breaker for this team. Uh, this team I actually have nicknamed in my like battle parties as Empoleon isn't real because if I see an Empoleon I basically lose. We have to go down two shields. I decide to bait. I'm hoping to get the shield and they call it. So what a huge mistake by me. Oh my goodness. That's terrible. We're going for another fire punch. They're tanking everything and they're able to get to a move. So now we have lost switch advantage and we're down two shields as you can see if you face empoleon with this team it's a very very terrible time for everyone involved we're going to be going for this feather dance and then my guess is we're going to be switching in the steelix to try and tank some damage but they switch out and they have a fury cutter septile in the back so an absolutely wild spice pick we're going for the crunch it's shielded but we get the defense drop and that's what's lethal again about crunch getting those defense drops and these dragon tails are really going to start to add up earthquake does huge damage but the bulky steelix holds on i'm going for the crunch but unfortunately i'm realizing that they're going to be letting this go because if they save a shield for mandibuzz they will be able to reach two moves before i'm able to reach another feather dance so this is going to be a good game so i definitely misplayed that game but basically anytime you see an empoleon with this team it is very very difficult to manage all right hopping into the next match here we have pidgeot into blastoise we've managed to catch the uh, ground counter on the lead which is very nice so again we're gonna stay in we're shielding up the first one and we are more than likely going to just be trying to get that debuff feather dance now the nice thing is, is since feather dance and brave bird both take five gusts sometimes you can get shields with feather dances like right there which is huge and i am gonna let this go the hydro cannon still does big damage but we're able to get to another Feather Dance, but they catch it onto a Wish Cash. The nice thing is, Diggersby handles Wish Cash pretty well, especially since we lowered their attack. Normally, Blizzard would be a real threat, but since we've lowered the attack, we really don't have to worry about it. We can just let this go. It'll do probably about just over half there, and that's totally fine by us. We can just Mud Shot down. You know what? Sure, Mud Bomb. Totally fine. Not worried about that. And we are going to leave with a ton of energy on Diggersby. And they are going to bring in the Blastoise. I probably could have just fire punched here. But I throw the Earthquake. They shield it up. So a bit of a mistake by me. But now we're going to be able to get to the Fire Punch anyway. And the Fire Punch gets them pretty low. And we're able to Mud Shot down. They have a Victini in the back. And things are looking really good for us. As these Dragon Tails add up and Crunch, of course, is hitting for super effective damage and the defense drop. This poor Victini, they have a ton of energy loaded here. First V-Create, we just let that go. And it doesn't kill. Oh, that is huge for us. They're forced to burn their energy there as well. And now one Mud Shot from Diggersby will take them out since their defense is quad debuffed and we're able to get the win. All right, hopping into the next match, we have Pidgeot into another Wish Cash. As I mentioned earlier, because of the of the increased energy that it takes to get the Feather Dance now, the additional Gust means you get outpaced on the first one, and unfortunately, we get baited. That is definitely not ideal here whatsoever, and they call the Feather Dance, and this should be the Blizzard right here. They're only one times debuffed. I let it go. We can tank the Blizzard though, and there's a whole bunch of lag, and now they're gonna switch out into Mandibuzz. So I'm not sure where they're at on energy on the Wish Cash or the Mandibuzz because of the lag. So we are going to throw the Feather Dance and switch in Steelix. And again, this is such a miserable matchup for basically any Pokemon. If you're able to Feather Dance them and then bring in Steelix, it's just absolute 
paid. We go for the crunch as all charge moves here are at the very least single resisted. So we may as well go for the crunch and hope for the defense drop chance. They've thrown two foul plays and it's just doing absolutely nothing here. They do a very nice catch back onto the wish cash. They're able to soak up the damage of that crunch, recognizing that the wish cash would not have a lot of play. And now they're gonna bring in Reggie Steel. And here I make a bit of a mistake. I aggressively switch in the Pidgeot because I'm wanting to Feather Dance, whereas it may have been a better decision to stay in and go for the Earthquake and force them to throw because now the Pidgeot is dead. We can bring in Diggersby here, which is really, really nice, but this will be rough. Their attack is lowered, but Focus Blast still hurts. They actually go for a Flash Cannon Bait first. Definitely wouldn't recommend that, especially when your attack is debuffed. But since we called it, we're in an okay spot. We go for the Earthquake there. Unfortunately, we do get the shield. They try and catch. They bring in the Mandibuzz, and I bring in the Steelix. Foul play, no longer debuffed. Unfortunately, it was a CMP tie. But on the bright side, we are gonna be able to hopefully take out the Mandibuzz here. And the goal is to hopefully force the Registeel to throw, which they do. Okay, this is so nice for us. The fact that they threw, we have a ton of energy. My guess is they're probably going to no shield this, try and call the fire punch bait. But since we have a big enough energy lead, we should just go straight earthquake. They call the bait and that's going to be taking out the Registeel and give us the game. So even against, so even against a, uh, some suboptimal playing on my part, still able to get the job done. All right, hopping into the next match. Again, another Unova Stunfist. This is pretty rough for us, of course. We are gonna be going for the Feather Dance, and Feather Dance will be lowering that attack by two stages, which is so crucial, as since this is a mud shot Unova Stunfisk, they're not applying a lot of fast move pressure. And now we're going for the Brave Bird, trying to do some big damage. Come on, please, no shield and they no shield now we're gonna bring in the steelix to aggressively try and farm them down and we catch a discharge in the process that is huge and we're able to dragon tail them down now we've taken care of that they have an obama snow in the back so it's really good to see this here and not versus our diggersby as Obama Snow, of course, is only going to be hitting for neutral, and we get the defense drop from Crunch. Crunch is so nice now. We're going to let this go. It's an Energy Ball. Energy Ball, not going to be taking us out. The natural bulk of Steelix, and we're going to apply so much pressure with Crunch. They're going to switch. They have Hypno. We are going to bring back in Pidgeot and really try and get off this Feather Dance. So we are going to be shielding up the Thunder Punch here. And again, with this team, as you can tell, I really like lowering people's attack. So you know what? Let's do it again. They think it's a Brave Bird. They shield it up. That's so nice for us. And from here, we just bring in the Diggersby. I'm hoping they don't have Focus Blast. Typically, Shadow Hypnos do not carry Focus Blast and they hit us with a fire punch, so definitely no focus blast there. So things are looking okay for us. Again, we can tank that, no worries. We're gonna bring back in the Steelix, get it as low as possible. Unfortunately, not quite able to Dragon Tail down, but we have a bunch of loaded energy on the Diggersby, and we are going to be able to throw the fire punch into the Obama Snow here, and throw the second fire punch onto the Shadow Hypno. So all in all, I did really enjoy running this team. I ran it over the course of two days. I ran it for a few battles one day and then a full day of battles the other. And I think I went 18 and nine overall. So the team went pretty well. It's definitely more of an unorthodox team, Pidgeot double ground, but I really enjoyed it. Just definitely watch out for those Empoleons. And with Steelix in general, I think the crunch buff really, really helps it. I mean, it was already really solid because of the Dragon Tail buff in season eight. But man, when, when you get those Dragon Tails going and then you get that Crunch Defense drop, Steelix is really, really tough to stop. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support you guys provide is absolutely incredible. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.